All right, guys, so I'm just going to give you a little history and background information on the Auburn Automobile Company. The automobile company began in 1900 through 1937. It was an Art Deco style administration building built in the 1923 through 1930 eras. How it housed uh, departments of Cord Corporation Manufacturing of Auburn, Cords, and Duesenberg Automobiles. It became the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum in 1974, which was then listed in the National Register History Places in 1978. The man you're going to see in the next couple videos is named John Bill, which he is the curator of the museum. Hey guys, we're here at the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum. Let's go check it out. Our most recent acquisition. Uh, we, we bring automobiles in here uh, frequently. So we're, we have, in the last year, uh, added several. One of the ones that we've added is this Duesenberg Model J right here. Came to us from the uh, Guy Beatty estate. This is what they call a dual towel phaeton. It has, uh, as you can see, two windshields. We do not uh, sell from our permanent collection. The uh, cars come to us uh, primarily by donation. People will uh, find a car, restore it take it to shows, win lots of awards and things like that. And uh, then when it's time to move on, while they, they, they seek a place where it can be cared for, where other people can enjoy it, and uh, so they may donate them to the museum. Other cars in here are on loan to us. And we have about uh, a 60-40 split, of, where we own about 60% of them. Was there, was there a purpose behind starting this whole museum? Well, it all had to do with the automotive heritage here in the town of Auburn, Indiana. Um, the, back in the, the very early days of the automobile, I'm talking right, right around 1900, there was a carriage company here in Auburn that made horse-drawn carriages and wagons and uh, it was uh, owned by the Eckhart family. And around 1900, they became aware of this new event invention, the horseless carriage, that was going to really be the next coming thing. So uh, they experimented a little bit, and uh, by 1903, they had developed a horseless carriage for sale to the public. Then they called that the Auburn. And they uh, went along pretty well. The company thrived up about until World War I uh, when the family decided they would like to sell the company. Eventually it was sold to some investors from Chicago and right after World War I uh, our country went into quite a recession at that time and the investors were losing money. So they found this guy by the name of E.L. Cord who was a, like a super automobile salesman up in Chicago. And they offered him the opportunity to come to Auburn and take over the operation of the company. And he made a deal with them that uh, he would not draw any salary, but instead work for 50%, I'm sorry, 20% of the profits. And he turned the company around to such an extent that within a year and a half he owned it. Has this museum, do you think, impacted like people's views and interest on these cars? Well, it's had tremendous impact. It's uh, this museum is consistently rated in the top ten of all automobile museums in the United States and throughout the world. Um, the Auburn, Ford, and Duesenberg automobiles, the three marks that were represented here, um, 
were very much ahead of their time in style and in engineering features, even though the company was very small. It had a tremendous impact in the marketplace. I might also mention in the museum, we not only have Auburn's Courts of Duesenberg, but we have uh, many other makes of car as well. What do you find most important about preserving the history of the whole movie that you have here? Well, it's very important that this history be preserved, number one. The automobiles that are represented here not only represent style and, and engineering features, but they also represent a lifestyle uh, unlike anything that, that we see today. And this building itself, being uh, an art echo structure, uh, shows the kind of, uh, kind of mindset that people had back in the 20s and 30s. Every year here in the town of Auburn, we have the, what we call the Auburn Court Duesenberg Festival. And it's over Labor Day weekend, or the week before Labor Day. And it attracts thousands of people into this town. And it's a, really a celebration of these types of cars and the enjoyment they bring. Uh, this, and, I, and I might also add, there's so much you can learn from these things. This, uh, like we mentioned, style and engineering, but there's how an entrepreneur works, you know, what, what uh, types of qualities does that kind of a person have, the history of the company, the economics of the time, what happened during the Great Depression. Uh, there, there's just all kinds of things that, are, that can be learned about just by studying the the history of this company and the cars in the museum. In your opinion, what would your favorite car be if you had to pick one? Here? My favorite car? Oh, well, first of all, there are, we have many wonderful cars in here. But let's walk over here and I'll show you one that. Uh, the first day I started working here, one of my fellow employees, he asked me the same question. They do that with every person when they start to push the picture. Now you take your picture by it. And 15 years later, this is still my favorite car. Um, it's just a spectacular uh, machine. And we'll talk about this right here. This is a 1931 Ford Speedster. So roughly, right about now, how many cars the museum, does the museum have or has it had over the past since it's open? Well, I can't really say how many it's had since it's open because they've been right, they come and out, you know, come and go. Um, but right now we have about 120 vehicles on display here in the museum. Right. So speaking of those festivals, um, was it a way just to bring the community in and learn more about the cars or educational purposes or just to have fun about it? Well, the festival was actually instituted by the Auburn Court Duesenberg Club, which is an international club of, of people that own these cars, enthusiasts. And they decided, well, we want to have a nat national meet. Well, what better place to have this national meet than in Auburn, where a lot of these cars were built and where this building is. So they started having their national meets here in the mid-50s, believe it or not, a long time ago. And uh, the meet just kept growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And one year, uh, they decided to have an auction here. And that was an automobile auction, that is. And that was very successful, and that grew. And, uh, well, I guess the rest is history. It just uh, kind of all took off, and now over Labor Day, there's the big auction out at the Auction America Park. Uh, there's the parade of classics that goes downtown and parks around the courthouse square on Saturday. We have thousands of people that come in and visit the museum at that time. It's just a lot, a lot of fun going on. Okay, so is there a certain car here, do you think, that has uh, 
more historical value than the rest? Oh, golly. Okay. Is there a story behind that's it? That's a very good question. Um, can we walk back yeah. over this way? This is from the 1932 Duesenberg model book. Uh, it was purchased brand new by Cliff Durant. Now, Cliff Durant was the uh, playboy son of William Durant, who owned General Motors. Uh, was this the fact that it was in the Durant family? It's a pretty special car. But he had it for several months and traded it to J. Paul Getty. And uh, Getty Oil, who at that time was one of the very rich oil. So you said it's kind of like a nationwide thing. So do these cars come from all over the nation? Mm -hmm. or? Yes, they do. And not only all over the nation, but all over the world. Uh, Auburn, at one time, exported as much as 20% of their production. So even though it was a small company, they were like number four in automotive exports in the United States. So these things are literally all over the world. They had dealers in 99 countries. Uh, tires are like mm -hmm. behind either one of the front wheels. I've never seen that on any other red car. Like oh. Uh, no, they're, they're called side mounted. They're, they're yeah, spare tires. What they are, the roads back in those days horrible compared to what we take for granted today. Uh, most roads, like you say, from here to Fort Wayne, you know, it's gravel. And um, the tire technology wasn't as good as it was today. So flat tires were very common. And um, that's why most of the cars you see in here have two spare tires on them. And not only have uh, one on the side, but they would have dual, what they call dual side. World War I, but there was a, in the town of Auburn here, Auburn Rubber Company that manufactured tires. And one of their ads that they had in a magazine, that, well, we drove this from Auburn to Fort Wayne and back. And didn't have to replace a tire. <laughs> Do you guys have like educational tours or anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, probably 1,500 students that come through here every year um, on field trips or study trips. A 1904 Auburn, the oldest Auburn known to exist. They started production in 1903, 1899 Waverly, electric car. Uh, today, electric cars are in the news. Well, this is where it started. Yeah, well, well over 100 years ago. Wow. We're fortunate enough to have two cars that are worthy to be in this museum. Uh, one of which is this 1961 Dragmaster chassis front engine rail dragster. 